Hey guys, it's Reenactment Day here with another video, and in this video I'm going to be covering what the GI was issued in 1945. That's going to cover the some of the things that were issued, and well, it's going to cover the most common, it, the, what's most commonly issued I'm going to be wearing, and what's less common but still around and was still being experimentally used, I'd say, uh, was, you know, not, was, uh, I'll, I'll talk about it too. Anyway. So, to just get start right into it, we got an M M37 uniform, standard, uh, in 1945. These were actually starting to become OD green, so that's something about the uniform, but this was still pretty, this was still the most common, I'd say. And now, most common, but, uh, most common was, I'd say, the M43 boots. Actually, I'd say they're about 50-50 to the boots and leggings. But the double buckle boots, you can see two buckles on it, just on a standard rough out boot. So I don't know if you could really see that, but you know, if you can't see it, I'll post a picture of it up. But you probably saw it, I think. Uh, so boots and leggings and the double buckle boots, they were about 50 50, I'd say, at this time. Uh, double buckle boots, I'm guessing the GIs more preferred them because they're easier to do. And the legging and and they work the same pretty much just the leggings go a little higher but actually this is also the time you started to see cut down leggings where the leggings were cut this short so i don't know so standard uniform and we'll go over to the field jacket we got the m43 jacket now instead of the m41 so certain divisions still had the m41 for the most part like my division actually did because Patton wanted us to wear them but these still made their ways into the ranks. As you can see, it has a drawstring that you can tie around your body, help keep some of the heat in, and just help to keep some of the keep the jacket closer to you too, so it doesn't hit me. So it won't get caught on anything. I'm not too sure what it's used for, but those seem like the two most viable options. Alrighty, just close the. Jacket, you can see they did away with the zipper and now it's all buttons, so it takes a minute. And this is also this is also the uh, as you can tell, it looks pretty similar to the jackets that were worn in Korea and Vietnam. So I'd say this is like the father or grandfather of those jackets. I'd say this is the grandfather to the Korean War or the father to the Korean War era one and the grandfather to the Vietnam era one. So this is where it all started. So you got four pockets, you know, standard green shirt or coat. Now this does look probably on the camera look a lot brown, like very brown, but because of all this, uh, it's it's green. It's green, the camera just kind of messes it up a wee bit. So there's that. Now moving on to the uh, lightweight gas mask bag. You can also have the general purpose bag, and this could also be a shade of OD7. So, now we move on to the little experimental piece of gear, I'd say. The M44 pack. Now, as an M44 pack converted to be an M45 pack, usually they wouldn't have these straps. Usually it would just be a uh, hooked on like a moveset bag, so you'd have the combat suspenders, the M43 suspenders, on the belt, and these would hook on just like that. But, because this is the M45, it's just like a normal backpack now, as you see. So, you got the center pack, you got little... This is where you hook on your shovel, and um, also right here. On the side, they actually made the loop and one bayonet length, which is nice. And the little epaulets to hold it on. So there's that. Now, just to kind of go over with the jacket real quick, we got the M43 pants that could be worn as either over pants in the winter or just regular pants. I did have to wear these and test them out at Callings because my wool pants decided to rip pretty bad so I had to get them sewn up before I could wear them again. So I wore that for the morning while our, um, while they sewed them, uh, sewed my pants back together. They're all good now. So. so, standard uniform, we got the gas mask bag. Now we go move on to the piece of field gear that's most common and hated by many, the haversack. Now, it may look good, but it's a pain in the butt to use. So, let's throw this on. Well, actually, I'll talk about this. I keep, I always forget to. You got the M43 shovel, and not the M1910, and the M1 bayonet. 
So let's throw this on. All right, here we go. So the Model 1928 Haversack and Model 1923 Cartridge Belt. Uh, the Model 1923 Cartridge Belt could be seen in OD7 as well, but Khaki was also seen, so. Yeah, and the Haversack just sits like that, you know. We got a OD7 Canteen cover. This is actually an original from 45, so historically accurate. And we also have the uh, aluminum Mall 1910 Canteen right here. But you could also have the stainless steel Mall 1942 Canteen. Pretty sure this is the Mall, that's the designation. If not, it's a 43. But 42 stainless steel Canteen. Both of them are viable as long as it, and also the plastic caps. The aluminum caps were seen, but they were becoming less common as they went along. And let's see, that's the uh, fuel gear. Lastly, we cover the M1 helmet. Now you see standard liner, the liner could be also OD7. Uh, I actually have a, oh, back on the haversack real quick, I have a meat can pouch, mess kit pouch. That's OD7, but I've never seen an OD7 haversack. There's been a pea green version in World War I, but never seen an OD7 one, so I don't know what's happening there. Anyway, back on the helmet. Liner could be OD7 on the inside, more of like an HVT material, but this was still very commonly seen as well. And because it is later, they were very starting to switch to the OD7 shin straps as well, as you see. So, the khaki ones, again, were still seen throughout the entire war. Fixed bales were seen through the entire war, but you got the chin strap right here. Throw that on. And here's the helmet. As you can see, looks pretty normal like they always were back then. Alrighty, now we start to cover the last and most expensive piece of kit that I'm now starting to show some of the older videos you won't see it. The most expensive piece of kit is the M1 Grand, the, you know, US rifle caliber 30 M1. So, but a lot of people call it the Garand, the Garand, sometimes the Grand, but as you can see, very nice rifle. So this was the standard issue from about 42 on. The O3s were still seen throughout the entire war, but every GI was most commonly issued the Garand. Now the Grand is an N block fed eight round uh, rifle. And as you can see, it's a pretty beefy rifle. It's a bit heavier. It's about 11 pounds, I think it was. 11 pounds. It has the canvas sling and not the leather one that they would have had early war. The canvas sling became around pretty quickly because they were cheaper and easier to make. And this is the rifle. As you can see, it is clear. just want to specify that. So with the rifle, again, like I've said, all snap caps. But one end block full of eight rounds you go right into the rifle and the way you do pretty much the way you load it is you take the palm of your hand put it down here you put the clip in you put the palm of your, or the end of your hand here and push it down with your thumb and you know you don't want to let that thing bite you because everybody knows the story about grand thumb so pop that clip out and because i know you guys will want to hear a very special sound that this makes. We'll just put that in, slam it shut. Sometimes you gotta give the handle a little nudge, and then we'll. Very nice, that was a satisfying one. So, the US Rifle Caliber 30 M1, also known as the Grand. Now, this Grand is actually what inspired the Russians mostly to develop the AK 47. Was the AK-47 really then pretty much the same gas system turned upwards? So, very iconic gun lead. Pretty, uh, as General Patton said, the best valve implement ever invented. So, you can actually see a couple features that this that were that the AK actually had up on this rifle. Well, you know what I mean. Charging handle is the same as the AK, or you know the AK's charging handle is the same as the Grand's. So. That's the same. So this charging handle really had two purposes. Number one, so you can hold this thing back. And because it's out of it, if it jams, you can set it down on the ground and kick it. So, haven't really had to do that, but I've seen some people do that. Which hurts to see, but it's like, eh, if it works. 
It's not gonna damage this thing. Thing is beat up as you can already see. The stock's already all beat up, but it tells the story. You can see little spots where the sights of other grands have kicked it in. So some features about this. Uh, this is a Springfield Grand. We got a milled trigger guard right here. Um, let's see, lock bar sights. I put those on there. They didn't come with that, but I just wanted them on there because I like the way they look. These sights that were on it were not original to the rifle. So, switch them back. We have a gas port, single slotted, late warding. We're actually starting to get the T. And the gas cylinder right here. I can go over all the parts about the Grand. So I could spend about an hour talking about it. Anyway, walnut stock, standard M1 Grand rifle. And also, with the M1 bayonet, was developed a main, you know, really for the Grand, or the O5s were cut down for the Grand as well, because we don't need the long O5s anymore, though they still do fit. The M1 can very nicely fit the M uh, M1 bayonet. So, this is a fun little rifle to have. I say little, this thing's heavy. It's massive. So, fun rifle to have. One rifle to point, it's well balanced. Very fun to use in reenactments. Now the sight is a rear aperture sight, you know, standard. Uh, sometimes you do sometimes have to make sure you're not getting the side uh, lips, the uh, sight front sight my guard, and mistaking it for the sight. But uh, let's see. they actually did adopt more of like an more of the P17, P13 style of sight or P14 style of sight. So you got that right there. Which is pretty interesting and because this band has a pan the butt to put away it's going on the floor for now so i think that is going to cover it for this video thank you for watching hope you enjoyed i'm just gonna actually do a little quick showcase of everything i got do a quick spin i guess so i got that all around all right and that's pretty much the main thing they were issued in 45 and, you know, after 45, the war ended, and we switched more. Sent a lot of guys home, and we were able to arm our, most of our military with the M45 pack and M44 pack. And the Grands, if they still had O3s. Either way, so, that's that. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any video ideas, please put down in the comments. Any videos that you want me to redo with this now, uh, put them down in the comments as well. Probably already be do, redoing a lot of them, especially some of the even some of the newer videos that, that I've done. I'll probably redo. So that will be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.